Supreme Court leak. Religious leaders react to possible end of Roe versus Wade. On May 2nd, Politico published a leaked draft opinion uh, from Associate Justice Samuel Alito that revealed how the Supreme Court plans to overturn the landmark Roe v. Wade decision that granted federal protection to abortion rights in 1973. Politico claimed that the draft, titled Opinion of the Court, written in February 20, uh, 2022, had circulated inside the Supreme Court before obtaining a copy. The Supreme Court verified the authenticity of the leaked documents and stated that the document, quote, did not represent the court's final view. Demonstrators from both pro-choice and pro-life camps flooded the steps of the U.S. Supreme Court a day after the leak was published. This decision, if enacted by the Supreme Court, will dispel the federal protections on abortion and allow each state to create their own policies on abortion. According to the polls, an overwhelming majority of Americans support Roe versus Wade, including a majority of religious people, even Catholics. Meanwhile, Greg Laurie, the pastor of Harvest Christian Fellowship and Franklin Graham, head of Billy Graham Evangelists Association, called the leaked draft a, quote, answered prayer. Wait, wait, did you just say the majority of Catholics are against, uh, like... The, uh, the ending Roe versus Wade. Wait. Yeah, majority of Catholics support Roe versus Wade. Why? Uh, how does that make any sense? If you're a Catholic, shouldn't you be anti-abortion? American Catholics are, are actually the some of the most pro-choice Catholics in the world. But how does that make any sense? Like, do they not know what they're supposed to believe? Um, I. <laughs> 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 I definitely don't think that is the case. Um, I, uh, I, I speculate that maybe they think that abortion should be a personal decision. Um, or They're not supposed that, to think. They're the, Catholics. The, <laughs> they're supposed to accept damn, the commands Robin. of the. No, they're um, supposed. They like they're not Protestants. They're not like free to decide what they think jesus says they have mm -hmm. to take the orders from the from the vatican no okay i think they don't know how to catholic yeah, or maybe many of them think that there shouldn't be a, a religious interference in the state like just because i am against abortion for myself personally as a catholic that doesn't mean that i think that the state should be involved in taking this away uh, from other women perhaps there you go Perhaps that's the reasoning. I don't know what the reason is for the majority of Catholics. I'm pretty sure there's been some studies on that. But anyways, mm -hmm. aren't Ghost Bunny saying, Armin, don't question them. They might change their mind. <laughs> <laughs> well, it doesn't It doesn't matter because in, apparently in the United States, the will of the people is, is not that important. Democratic uh, institutions, who? <laughs> okay, okay. But yeah, okay. You were going to say? Um, Forever Stormy on Twitch is saying, guys, go follow us on Twitch. Uh, she's saying most people want to allow abortion in the first trimester and then ban it except under certain circumstances. That's a reasonable position. The extremists are the problem here. Yeah. Okay, but the okay, how are religious leaders reacting? Like, okay, you know, let I'm me pull up my sources. Actually, I figured out that my computer won't crap its pants if I do this on a, on my laptop. So let me. Yeah, let me yeah, because every sword. time you do something else, how is your computer so crappy? But every time, yeah, <laughs> every time Susanna pulls like something and you watch, look at something else, her computer crashes and we get robotic. Yeah, so I'm like, I don't know why it took me this long to figure out I can just look at something on a different screen over here. <laughs> yeah. It's kind of embarrassing, actually. Okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, here are some other uh, religious reactions to this. Uh, mm -hmm. Dania Rutenberg, a rabbi and scholar at the National Council of Jewish Women, uh, really started to emphasize the Jewish case for abortion justice. Another rabbi, Rick Jacobs, president of the Union for Reform Judaism, declared that they would fight for abortion rights, saying abortion justice is an economic issue, a racial justice issue, and yes, it's a Jewish issue. In Judaism, abortion is not just allowed, it is also mandated to preserve a pregnant person's life and well-being. 
We will fight for abortion rights with all our strength. Jamie Manson, head of Catholics for Choice, a Catholic abortion rights advocacy group, said the news is not shocking. We listened in December 1st to these arguments and we know the makeup of this court. We have five radically anti-choice Catholics on this court, so we weren't surprised. Um, I have a few more reactions if you give me a second. Okay, so I just want to say a few things, okay? This is completely a religious decision. Mm -hmm. Like, there's no denying that this is completely based on faith and based on the faith of the 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 judges on the supreme court like if anybody denies that you're insane okay that the conservative views of the judges which is influenced by the religious faith has made has been forced upon the people of america this is you know um the fact that a lot of people still some people still want to argue that no these these judges are not do not put use their ideology to make decision to make decisions like you have to be so blind to see how how correlated their decision making process of the judges is to how conservative or liberal they are right and this is not a, one of those cases that correlation does not prove causation okay because there's literally no other explanation there's literally no other causation that it could cause this correlation right so mm -hmm. given but this that is it, not philosophical this is not a philosophical debate about a religious debate what yeah. when does life begin which is something that no one has been able to come to a firm conclusion about well when does when does personhood begin right the yes. main question, I think. yeah no, that's I a mean, better way of putting it yeah so so given that it's based on co their conservative views because we know we can see that the way that people like they're not not i'm, I'm not i'm not just talking about the uh, the conservative judges both the liberal and conservative ones they're not objective okay no. if they were objective they wouldn't be the republicans and democrats wouldn't be fighting so much to get their conservative or liberal judges under like we know that their ideology matters okay and the conservative judges their conservatism comes from their religion so this is religion being forced upon so this is a violation of united states secularism okay so the majority that. of the justices on the Supreme Court right now were elected by presidents that did not win the majority vote. Oh, wow. Well, okay. Trump oh, so and, by the way. By, by Trump and Bush. They did not win the majority of the vote. They were elected through, you know, like the technicalities yes. of, the, of the Electoral College. Yes. And also, also, if you if you didn't vote for hillary because you you hated her and you thought all sides are bad right like screw look what you've done look at what you've done like seriously you have you should be ashamed if you didn't vote for hillary you're responsible for this any american who thought like they're all bad or oh, hillary and trump it doesn't make any difference well apparently it does and now women in America, especially poor women, are going to suffer partly because of you and because of you being a moron and not actually paying attention to how things work. So anybody who could have voted for Hillary and didn't, you should be ashamed right now. Like it is a direct consequence. It is 100% a direct consequence. It, 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 like that's not debatable. <laughs> Um, so one thing I wanted to point out, um, in terms of this whole being explicitly a religious debate and we should stop pretending otherwise is so Andrew Seidel, who was a constitutional lawyer and a lawyer at the freedom from religion foundation, um, wrote a wonderful article in religion dispatches, um, titled the end of row and school prayer. America is not ready to be a Christian nation. And in it, he says, 
for a brief clear moment during the oral argument for the very case that this draft opinion decides, Dobbs versus Jackson Women Health Organization, Justice Sotomayor cut through all the pretense built up around this issue and asked Mississippi, how is your interest anything but a religious view? The state fumbled for an answer. So, and then, yeah, th that was like the only time in these proceedings that that was actually named as such. If, and then he continues, if you want a clear connection between church-state separation and reproductive justice, a few days ago, Marjorie Taylor, Green, Marjorie Taylor Green claimed that Satan's whispers are what leads to abortion. Of course. Thank you, Satan. Um, wait, was it also another thing, another if you, wasn't it um, Ruth uh, Bader Ginsburg who just decided to just stay and not um, until she died yeah even though she had cancer multiple times before yeah like what's up with that like <laughs> like wouldn't she be in hell right now if there was a hell like why did she just... she was a good woman that was just a really poor no. decision no no I, well this ruined everything like this ruined her legacy like screw you lady oh who's dead who can't hear me like if like I, I wish I could swear because YouTube doesn't let me swear. Why did she stay? Like okay, so she, she stayed on instead of stepping down, so Obama could pick the, uh, her replacement, and she died during Trump. Mm -hmm. Didn't like she didn't she know that like she had cancer. She knew she must have known that there's a high chance she's gonna die during Trump time. Why didn't she step down during Obama's time? I don't understand. Can somebody explain? People tried to get her to step down. I don't know. That's like a backstory and question that I'm not familiar with that whole saga. No, like seriously, like you, you, you she, 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 she was, she came to the, uh, she, she did everything she did. Uh, she does like partially started because she was a woman's right activist, right? Well, you screwed, you, you died at the wrong time and you screwed woman for many, many years. Ruth, I hope for your sake there's no hell. Well, okay, what she did wasn't technically a sin. Okay, so she wouldn't be in hell. Maybe well, it should be a things. sin. It should be a sin. Yeah, this is definitely like complicated her legacy greatly. Um, it. I think um one thing that needs to be noted is that this was a draft opinion, so the final opinion might change. Now the likelihood of that happening is slim. Um, but you know, like the final opinion isn't expected to come out in June or July. So we don't know for a fact that this is what's going to happen. Um, but it's highly likely. So it's not good at all. It's horrible. Um, I want to make it clear that if this does happen, if Roe v. Wade is overturned, it, it will not, it will not ban abortion federally. It does not mean that no women in America will have rights to an abortion. No, it just lets the states ban. It just lets the states ban it now. Yeah, it just means that some women will not have access to this. Many women. Um, yeah, no, I'm, I'm it's some as yeah. opposed to all, not yeah. some as in few. Um, and this is a huge issue because it it relegates the rights that are available to you depending on you know what state you live in and this southern and midwestern states are looking increasingly <laughs> uh almost theocratic uh and it's i really worry about the handmaid's tale yeah safety of women who are there i mean some of the bills that they're putting forward are absolutely insane like you know death penalties for getting abortion um making plan b illegal um okay but the, like, those bills were not approved just for for the case for the sake you know for transparency like, i know but the, the, it just speaks yeah. to the attitudes yeah and yes. when if roe v wade is overturned then the the rights that are available to any person living in that state will immediately revert back to what the state has on the books and some of them are extremely severe um hmm. and uh other states you'll be fine uh, you'll be completely protected like california like nothing's gonna change um 
it'll be fine, but um, it'll just, yeah, it, I don't know. I had, when I, when this happened, when this leak came out a few days ago, like I was, I like just didn't even have a reaction. You know, when something like is so huge and it hits you so hard, you like just have no reaction that that's how I felt. Um, I too. No. Yeah, go on. Two inches. Secular Sakai is saying time to create term limits for the Supreme Court. Ah. Also, this one. And D. Boudreau is saying pro life people asking for the death penalty. Yeah, some of them. Some pro life people are like actually consistently get against the death penalty. But, anyways, um, so I was listening to Andrew Seidel talk about this. And um, you guys can go check out what he has to say on his YouTube channel because he's extremely well versed in these issues and also um, very good at speaking about it. And he was basically talking about how the only solution to this problem is we have to expand the courts. We have to expand the courts. We have to pack the courts. We have no other option besides living under minority rule because not only are opinions like this supported by a minority of Americans, but the court itself is vastly overrepresented by Catholics. There's a huge overrepresentation of Catholics on the Supreme Court. Catholics are a minority in the United States. So they're allowed to push forward their own agenda um, that is explicitly religiously informed. Um, for many of them, some have different stances on it, depending on their background. Um, Bubble is saying this can also lead to appeal of other rights like same-sex marriage that's not deeply rooted in American history. Yeah, so this is a this is a bigger issue because based on what was seen in the draft opinion by Alito, um, it overturns a lot of prior precedent. Um, it and a lot of that precedent has to do with. Um, like massaging, I don't, that's not the way I want to say it, but um, adapting the constitution to fit in increasingly modernizing America, right? Um, and their own interpretation of the right to privacy. And this right to privacy was used to justify make, um, removing it being illegal to have anal sex, for example, like removing you know, homophobic anti-sodomy laws was under this. Um, the right to privacy is also how we secured um, right. same-sex so, marriage in America. So if this is if this is the precedent and this is their un reasoning and understanding for getting rid of this, then they can also use that same reasoning to get rid mm -hmm. of these other things. So can I can I say it? okay maybe in a um, e easy way to understand tell me if i'm correct about this okay so there's nothing so there's nothing in the constitution that says that you cannot ban i don't know anal sex or say same sex marriages or i don't know uh, abortion or anything anything like this right mm -hmm. um however the people who try to argue that oh the constitution doesn't allow you to ban these they they say they say that the constitution gives you uh, the right to privacy and because the right to privacy means that you cannot ban these things so so that's how previously they the supreme court uh, judges try to allow make it so that these are not bannable okay it, so that's basically. why we got, basically okay so however now they're arguing that there's nothing in the constitution that's so that so explicitly gives you this right to privacy. They say because, abortion is not mentioned anywhere in the constitution. Yeah, but also this level of privacy is not, you can't, you're like making a leap, like you're interpreting it in such a way that gives you this level of privacy. You have to massage the constitution to get that out of it. And because you exactly. have to play you have to play around with the constitution to get that right of privacy and it's not explicit. Therefore, all of these con conclusions could be void. Okay. However, you know what I say to that? I say, you know what else is not mentioned in the constitution and you have to like play around with it and come up with gym gymnastic arguments 
uh, to come up with interpretations to get something out of it that is not in the Constitution. Do you know what else is there, Susanna? That the judges come with the conclusion that the Constitution demands that, but it doesn't explicitly demand it? I don't know. What the Supreme Court! The Supreme oh! Court! <laughs> <laughs> okay? So let's use let's play just use a uno reverse card let's like use his own argument against them like okay no you well, you are not in the constitution either <laughs> nothing that you do your entire institution and all your responsibilities is not in the goddamn constitution <laughs> so i don't know is that not a way that we could go at them I don't know. Uh, I don't think that that would work in oral argument. I don't know. I'm not a lawyer. <laughs> Let's ask Andrew Sardell. No. Like, hey, hey, these people are I trying to throw away. I don't know how well the justices would take to, you are illegitimate, your honor. <laughs> <laughs> Based on your own argument, your entire institution is not necessary. <laughs> I don't know. I guess so. Uh, uh, Google is making a good comment saying, I feel like conservatives read the constitutions like Salafis read the Quran, meaning literally. Oh. Liberals read it like progressive Muslims trying to find arguments in the text and make up rights. That's a little bit of a generalization, but basically you're right. I was reading a really interesting article um, by Religion Dispatches and said that Legal scholars have found that belief that the Bible is literally true helps predict adherence to constitutional originalism, the politicized philosophy that maintains that the Constitution should be interpreted according to its original meaning. While the present connection may be unsurprising, the long history of this ideological pairing is too often ignored. So I read this like full article about how... Um, especially really right-wing evangelicals have historically pushed for this originalist uh, constitutional um, uh, lens or dissection. Secularity saying use, know what else isn't technically in the constitution? Freedom of speech. We had to have an amendment. Like right after it was written, they were like, oh, F, forgot a couple things. <laughs> um, That's literally okay. what the Bill of Rights is. <laughs> Right, but here's um, a here's here's the most important comment I think for today. Oh, Bubble is saying this makes me feel like I have no right over my own body. Well, yeah, damn, yeah. I mean, I get what you mean. It's really scary to think that, like, if I moved to a different state and I became pregnant, like, I wouldn't have so many. Yeah, I wouldn't have choices available to me. I'd be forced to give birth whether or not it was, you know, highly um, dangerous for me medically. Um, mm. Secular Sakai, ugh, biblical literalism. This is the stance of the crazy Constitution Party, the forgotten fifth largest party of the United States. Oh, my God. Okay, mm. yeah, well, I didn't know that either. The fifth largest, uh-oh. Um, mm. One thing that is a little a uh, bit different topic, but I think is important to discuss is like the impact that this leak is going to have on the court. Like, I don't know. I actually think it's a really bad thing that this leaked happened. I think it's a really bad oh. thing. I think wait, it, wait, it, it, it breaks the standards and confidentiality of the court, which is going to shatter the Supreme Court's relation of the justices and their clerks and their, you know, different teams. You know, they have to have a working relationship. They have to be able to work through these decisions together. And the fact that this is leaked is going to have serious consequences on, like, the, the culture and standards within the Supreme Court. This is the first time that this has happened on this scale in the court's modern history, right? And um, also, if there are adjustments to this decision, people are now just going to say that they were all politically motivated because of the reaction to this draft being leaked. So they're not going to make any change. Serious consequences. So yeah, some yeah, some people are suggesting the leak makes it uh, impossible now for the judges. May like I, well, we don't know any of this. We don't know. Like this is just guessing because, um, and I don't know if this is valid or not. But yeah, so based on what Susanna said, the judges maybe are not able to change it at, at all anymore because any the, the most minor changes would be scrutinized as giving into um, you know popular demand. Uh, 
it, which, it, it oh, completely questions the legitimacy of the court at every level. Hmm. Well, I mean, I mean, okay. Anyways, fix your constitution, in the United States. Like people like keep acting like this constitution is like the word of God and you can't change it. It's obviously flawed if it doesn't. Wait, protect what do you want? Basic... What, what do you want to fix about it? Something that a constitution that covers more basic human rights. Oh, okay. Yeah, true. True, true, true. Yeah. I like that. I like that too. The U yeah. United States Constitution is one of the most difficult constitutions to amend in the world. Well, that's a problem. It needs to be amended. It's flawed. It's not complete. Obviously, mm -hmm. it doesn't cover some some basic human like we it has to be times change. Times new change. situations and new yeah. new the world new is the world is progressing. Anymore. The world is progressing and we're adding to the list of basic human rights that we want covered. So your constitution needs to be able to adjust itself more easily than this. Anyways. Um, okay. I'm going to go yeah. here, here. It's complicated. Anyways, we'll see how this pans out. I donated a bunch of money to the Freedom From Religion Foundation because they oh. are deeply involved in actually making arguments before the Supreme Court on rights like this um, and and preparing uh, primers and prima facies, facies whatever, all, all this stuff. They're deeply involved in fighting for your rights, even if you're not a secular person. Um, and uh, so I donated money to them. It, American Atheists also was involved um, with these kind with this case and with preparing a lot of these materials as well um so you know fffrf fantastic organization do your own research and consider donating if you like because they are literally at the forefront of preserving secularism in the united states they do it unlike any other group or organization so good 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 hey guys if you're a fan of blasphemy and sexy cali you know like me, then you need to be sure to subscribe to our newsletter. Link in the description below. Because if you subscribe, we will send you a free copy of our Blasphemous Art ebook. And let me tell you, it is the tastiest blasphemy that you can find anywhere available today. And we are so generous with our blasphemy that we continue to send you more blasphemy every week. So make sure to subscribe. Link in the description below.